Welcome to the Internet Report, where we uncover what's working and what's breaking on the Internet and why. Today, we're going to deep dive on the Microsoft Teams outage that occurred this morning. So that's April 27th, and it started around uh, 3 a.m. Pacific time. And to discuss this outage, I'm joined by Hans Ashlock, who's uh, Director of Technology and Innovation uh, here at Thousand Eyes. Thanks it is for great, me. great to be here. This is. I think we were we were realizing that this is my first internet report. That's right. That's right. Which we were both surprised. surprised. <laughs> yes. So welcome. Um, and this is a really interesting one because it was one that just it you know it wasn't a network related outage. This really was something that um, happened kind of you know deep within the the application or at least kind of you know only if you were to log into um, Microsoft Teams. So let's go ahead and and mm -hmm. do a deep dive on it um, and kind of. Um, walk through what we saw um, using our own tests. I like this outage um, because it tells an application story a little bit beyond uh, a network story. So I think it's really interesting um, what we're gonna what we're gonna find here. So yeah, and it's always good to just look at outages from the standpoint of like what can be learned from them, right? Yeah. So what are we looking at here? So this is a test that Thousand Eyes is running against uh, teams.microsoft.com, but it is more than just a server test or a network test. Actually, you can see that in, in this example, we're not actually running any network tests here. We're just doing a synthetic transaction test. Um, and what is that? The synthetic transaction test is a essentially a way that uh, our agents can run user-like behavior against web, uh, web-based applications. Right. So, so, yeah. So we can see here that it's it started at, at 3 a.m. Pacific time, which is um, is interesting because that's you know considering that Microsoft's on the West Coast, that's probably a good time to do any maintenance or updates to an application or a service. So. You know, just something to note from the standpoint of, you know, um, that potentially being, you know, the, the, the cause of the incident. And then we see that it lasted almost yeah, an lasted. hour, like an hour yeah. and 40 minutes, um, an hour and 30 minutes. Um, so this is pretty long from the standpoint of a service like this. Um, and what's yeah. interesting is that it's global from the standpoint that it was unavailable for users wherever they were located, right? We can see that wherever users were connecting from, and they're probably hitting their local um, like edge node for Microsoft, that it just wasn't working. Yeah, this is pretty significant. I mean, you can see that every single one of our vantage points virtually um, across the globe is impacted by by this outage. So this is this is a this is a really major outage. Yeah, and 3 a.m. Um, you know, obviously that doesn't impact a lot of users in the U.S., but of course in APAC and EMEA, that's going to be. It's definitely going to impact users in APAC and EMEA for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so we can dive into this and look mm -hmm. look at what's going on. Part of it's going to be um, we can look really quick at um, so the actual waterfall view for for this test. Um, I've brought that up already here so we can see right at the time that the transaction test is failing. I have one of our agents selected. This is the Chicago agent. So we're looking at the vantage point from of someone from Chicago and the the transaction that's being performed is the user is connecting to uh, teams.microsoft.com that's redirecting them to a sign-in page which is going to be common across most of the the microsoft 0365 platform yeah um and so you can see the the pages that are coming up sign into your account so the transaction test is allowing the thousand ice test to to enter actual login credentials logging into Teams, um, and then it's failing to load the Teams backend. Um, and actually, this test is timing out after like six, 60 seconds. Um, we took a, a 
we'll look at that in a second, but we, you know, we take a screenshot and it's, it's just sitting there spinning. Right. Um, so we can see that there's like some authentication steps or, are you know, um, you know, going there, you're going through the authentication steps. You can see, you know, in the domain column that it's hitting the authentication servers on the back end and, um, those same authentication servers and the authentication service is common across the Office 365 apps. Yeah. Y'all use it, right? Not this is, yeah, this is going to be pretty standard stuff. You're just, so you're just hitting this login.microsoftonline.com, right? That's the, that is the, the standard front door to kind authentication of front door, right? And you're going to see that for um, most, if not all of the Microsoft services. So, you know, Excel, PowerPoint, anything that is 0365 and in that family, right? So what we can see is that at the point that the, the authentication is happening, um, you know, single sign-on stuff might've already happened. Um, we're essentially redirecting and then handing off to the team service. So we're handing off from the global Microsoft authentication services to the specific team service. And that's where, and that's where we have the issue. So we get right. in here, you know, a little ways and, you know, pretty early on we're, um, we're blocked and we're getting a 401 response. Um, and, and that's consistent with what we know of the outage, which it really only affected teams. It didn't impact any other Office 365 app, which we will look at in just a moment. Yeah, that's right. So this is a, this is a failing scenario. We can, we can look at when it's, when it's working right. Um, we can see that same thing that, you know, here's the, here's the handoff to teams. Um, and then there's and there's no issues and it moves on with with loading the rest of the back end. So that's really where the error is. I mean, we could we could drill down a little bit further to try and figure out by looking at some of the headers and stuff what really is going on there. Um, you know, this 401 is suspicious. That may mean that the that the authentic authentication service didn't really work. That we don't have a valid OAuth token or something like that to. To, to validate with the team's back end. Um, but we'll, we'll not dive any, any deeper into that, but really it's that the, it's this team service handoff that is really the, the issue. Right. So we can look at a few others, like if we, for the same period of time, if we look at um, tests yeah, we're that we're running to Excel, yeah. Um, you know, this is targeting excel.office.com. This is also a transaction test. So, you know, here we're doing the page load and then we're signing into our Excel, um, to our Excel account. And you're going to see a lot of the same stuff. Here's that global login, right? And then we're going to see a similar handoff, um, where this login is. So it's not impacting Excel. If we look at, um, you know, similar transaction test for PowerPoint, um, there's some issues with this test in, in particular. So you see some errors and stuff, but similarly, you know, there's no. <laughs> so there, there wasn't, it, you know, this is during the outage. So here we're looking at like 1020 ish um, UTC. And this is 1020 UTC is like three 20 a.m. Pacific time, right? So yeah. it's during the outage for Teams and PowerPoint is available, you can log in. Um, Excel is available, you can log in. So obviously 65 overall is, is available. It's just, um, as we mentioned, you know, it's just Teams here. Yeah, and, exactly. And the authentication piece kind of seemed at least, you know, um, the, the first initial steps of it um, seemed to be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's really interesting because you know we you know we kind of can see like the whole arc of the of the outage or, or maybe like the valley of the outage um, and it not being available, um, but we you wouldn't really be able to like see this or kind of be able to validate that it's an application issue if you were doing a really kind of simple and you know uh, synthetic test like just an HTTP GET request or even just loading the the front door like the the login page you really have to go through 
to the back end where you're accessing teams specifically that you run into this issue. Yeah, and so to underscore that point, um, what I've brought up here is another test to teams.microsoft.com, right? So this is, this is another test and this is just a page load um, HTTP server and, and network test. We are targeting teams.microsoft.com, but because we're not going through that authentication and the, and the login process, we're not really we're not actually hitting Teams' yeah. service yet, right? We're not, like we're still going right. to the front door. We're not hitting the, like the really the Teams app. Yes, we're we are hitting Teams. We're getting possibly redirected to a login or something like that, right? So, um, so your your page load test is going to look good. Um, you know, we can go look at the waterfall for that, the HTTP server test, the availability of the, of the actual server um, is going to look pretty good. And, you know, we're probably not going to see anything. We know it's not a, a, not a network issue. If we look at the network stuff, it's going to, it's right. going to look pretty good as well. Right. Yeah. Um, so if you were just looking at all of the data that were, you know, the page load, the server, the network, hey, actually everything looks pretty green, looks pretty good. Exactly. So that really underscores how, you know, transaction tests can be really valuable, not just from the standpoint of like, you know, an SRE or, or DevOps kind of trying to validate that an application they're, they're responsible for is up and available, but even, you know, validating the, um, the availability and the usability of some of these applications that don't actually really kick in until you're kind of log, you've gone through the login process. That can be really important. Um, yeah. So I, what I think is really interesting here, like you said, Angelique, is that the, we have to do as, as the world becomes more focused on applications and, and particularly cloud and SaaS applications, there's more complexity at the app level and it's more and more important to get past the sort of virtual, I don't know what you've got, a virtual front door or the, you know, um, and that's why the, the transaction tests when it comes to these kinds of applications are, are so important. You know, you don't need to create a full like QA um, test suite. So a, a lot of people that um, that are familiar with transaction tests like this. So we use um, WebDriver on the back end. A lot of your average dev test QA people will know what WebDriver is. Um, you know, has its origins in Selenium, right? And this is this is where um, QA teams test their web apps. Um, but in, in this scenario, what's, what's really interesting is to use those capabilities, not to do performance testing of our, you know, of web applications, but to do service testing, backend service testing. And that's kind of the, um, the critical insight here. Um, this is another transaction test that is also targeting teams this is a different test that's, that's running a different transaction test. Um, just to call out that, that idea that in the transaction test, um, we want to be able to um, exercise common user steps. So the most common is logging in, letting the back end load, and then in this case, like the, the Teams test here is composing a message and sending a Teams message. Right. Um, so this backend load, we're measuring that with um, the markers within the transaction test. So we can look at the performance of the backend load service over time. Um, and then similarly, you know, these additional um, user business transactions like um, sending a message, or if this were like an e-commerce site, maybe it's, you know, adding an item to a cart and purchasing the item. Right. Those are going to be exercising serv different services on the back end. Um, and, and so you can capture all of those in the transaction test. So right. really it's about service testing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing that I think is really interesting. So, you know, kind of one, one lesson is, you know, there's 
given the complexity of applications, so much is taking place, you know, kind of like on the back end, once you log in, transaction tests are really important just from kind of understanding availability. But also what's really interesting about this is that, you know, as we saw, we could see the exact point in which the application was not available, right? Like 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. Pacific time, 10 a.m. UTC. And, you know, like you can get alerted immediately, right? If there's a failure of the transaction. Um, from a status update standpoint, if you, you know, we can see here, um, Microsoft put out like their first acknowledgement of the issue was at 3.30 a.m. via their Twitter feed. And, yeah. you know, so basically 30 minutes after the incident occurred and, you know, I mean, application providers are going to be really laser focused on identifying and remediating issues when, when they pop up. So, you know, the, the kind of the communication might become secondary in some cases. So, you know, while this is, seems like, okay, it's 3 a.m. in the, U, you know, on the West Coast in the U.S., this is during business hours in EMEA and Asia. And so a 30 minute window, of just not understanding what's happening and what the source of the issue is can be a lot of just wasted cycles. So mm -hmm. it was interesting to see, you know, like if you're actively testing, you're going to have, you know, the, the, the real information, the real data, like in real time. Um, the other thing is kind of interesting is they, they mention Europe and Asia specifically. Um, but the language here is really important because they just said impacting Europe and Asia because it's during their business hours. But of course, if you were in the US and just happened to have been wanting to use Teams uh, at 3 a.m., then you would also have been affected as well. So, um, yeah, that's right. I mean, that yeah. 30 minutes is non trivial. Yeah, yeah. Um, Definitely. And, um, and overall, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big percent of the, of the, of the overall outage, which was also. Yeah you know, not non-trivial. Yeah. So that's kind of a, in a, in a nutshell, you know, this team's outage that occurred earlier today. Um, you know, again, Hans, thank you so much for coming on the show today and walking us through what happened. It was really interesting. Um, and we hope to have you on the show again soon in the near future. Um, well, so I forward to it. Thank you, Angelique. <laughs> thanks Hans. So that's our show. Um, if you have any suggestions or topics that you think uh, you know, we should be covering, feel free to drop us an email at internetreport at thousandice.com. And if you subscribe to our podcast, you can also request a free t-shirt. Um, so send us again, just a note with your, um, your physical address and your t-shirt size, and we'll be sure to get that right over to you. So until next time, thanks. <laughs>